at 7.30. We'll call a regular city council meeting of June 15, 2020 to order. Um, let's begin by standing and saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All individuals are asked to either silence or turn off all cell phones, pagers, and other electronic devices that may disrupt the meeting. Approval of the agenda. Approve the agenda as posted in accordance with the open meeting law, and here in place all agenda items on the table for discussion. What is the wish of the council? So moved. Second. Motion by council member Kanakla, second by council member Hansen. Roll call, please. Kanakla? Yes. Wiltergren? Wiltergren? Yes. Burcock? Yes. Storley's absent, correct? Yes. Hansen? No. Gushnick? Yes. Carries. Approval of the minutes. Special work session meeting of June 1st, 2020, and the regular meeting of June 1st, 2020 approved. What is the wish of the council? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. Um, motion by council member Liljigren, second by council member Lundberg. I just thought of, I didn't want to mention, I believe for a regular meeting it said it started at 6.30 instead of starting at 7.30 like we did. Um, call roll please. Liljigren? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Dilka? Yes. Urkok? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Bushick? Yes. Kanakala. Yes. Carries. Approval of the bills. Checks 102743 through 102831, totaling $2,936,528.03. Approved. What is the wish of the council? I'll make a motion to approve the bills. I'll second. Motion by Councilmember Goshek, second by Councilmember Kanakala. Any discussion? Call roll, please. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Burkock? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Bushick? Yes. Kanakala? Yes. Wiljagren? Yes. Carries. Awards, donations, presentations, and proclamations. Award, State Historic Preservation Grant, Camp Program, Heritage Preservation Commission, Receive and accept. I don't know, John or Lori, if there's anything you need to tell us about it or we just need to accept it. I believe you can um, accept it. This grant was applied for uh, just about a year ago, I believe. Um, and it is a, a grant that the um, Historic um, Heritage Preservation Commission would work with other um, heritage, other commissions to work on um, historic uh, preservation type items. Yeah, so there, there is, uh, I think this came up because the city of St. Cloud um, was looking at developing a historic preservation uh, uh, district and our, our commission and they had, um, you know, so, so being able to work with us because we had ours established would help them get theirs established and be able to work through the state historic preservation societies um, and, their, and other opportunities that they have. So, so I think that's where, where some of this uh, came up from. So that was the, the initiation of the group. And we're just accepting it. Yeah. What is the wish of the council? Mr. President, I'll make a motion to uh, approve accepting the grant. Second. Motion by Council Member Goshek, second by Council Member Lundberg. 
Motion by Council Member Hanson, second by Council Member Wilgerda. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Zoka? Yes. Percock? Yes. Hanson? Yes. Bushick? Yes. Anopola? Yes. Wiljagrin? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Carries. Presentation, Camp Ripley's Economic Impact Statement and Environmental Activities. General Cruz, thank you. Well, good evening to Little Falls Council. Hopefully you can all hear me. Um, I'm joined tonight by CW3 Shane Hogan, who is my um, Joint Visitor Bureau Chief. And we're excited to be a part of your meeting and once again come to you and talk about um, Camp Ripley's contribution to your city. And more importantly, some of the highlights of our, our last year and some of the things that are gonna occur over the next year. So um, John's got my presentation on the screen and so I'll go through that. John, if you go to the next slide, please. So um, your slides are kind of different than mine, but that's okay. I can oh, the the um, didn't show up. Yeah, for some reason, that's okay. Um, the pictures are probably the more important piece. The previous slide before this one talks about my mission statement. And obviously, as I've explained to you before, um, Camp Ripley's mission is to train our National Guard and our, our, and our DOD military personnel for our nation's worst day as we train to fight to go to um, conflict in defense of our nation. But um, it's also, just go back up to the picture with General Jensen, Joel. One more, there you go. But it's also to help train our state agency partners for um, you know Minnesota's worst day. And over the last month or two, you've seen us respond to a lot of bad days in Minnesota. So we're pretty proud that we were able to respond and help quell some of the riots that were occurring in the Twin Cities here over um, George Floyd's death. And I'm pretty proud of the whole team and the fact that over a three day period, we were able to mobilize over 7,500 of your Minnesota National Guard soldiers to go down there and help stabilize that situation it was a pretty Pretty great achievement from my point of view for the team. Um, so that ties right into my mission statement of training those soldiers for the state's worst day. But also, you know what I'm doing tonight is the third leg of that mission statement. That's trying to be the best neighbor that we can here at Camp Ripley. And so um, that's kind of where we're at. John, um, I think Shane ran off to try to send you another version for some reason. So keep an eye on your email while you're at it. Go on to the slide, please. So um, the next three slides, if you go up one, please. Um, we want to talk a little, yep, you're, <laughs> the picture of General Jensen is where I'm trying to go next, please. There you go. General Jensen is our current adjutant general, but you saw a lot of the news conferences with Governor Waltz. You um, got to see what a brilliant leader John Jensen is. And um, he's been our adjutant general for three years. He was um, recently nominated to become the director of the Army National which is the, um, the team that manages the resources for all the National Guards in the nation. So he's going to get promoted to three-star general out of that. And we're currently in the process of trying to identify and nominate and select a new adjutant general in the state. Um, below the picture, John Jensen is our new state command sergeant major, Brian Soper. And he um, is originally from the Fargo area spent a lot of time in Washington, D.C., so he brings back a wealth of connections at the national level for us, and he's currently our state command sergeant major. The next slide, please, will show us uh, Brigadier General Mike Wickman. Mike and I deployed together in 2004, and he's now our division commander, so he will eventually get promoted to two stars here. And so he's the 34th Infantry Division Commander, and his um, command sergeant major is is um is Mike Whitehead who is below in there in the picture. Mike is a um, the command sergeant major of the division headquarters, but more importantly, he's the national president of the disabled American veterans. So um, throughout our whole command team, we've got a lot of different leadership and a lot of aspects of society. And if you go down the slide, you'll see a picture of me. Um, 
I have probably the only con con constant piece in all these pictures. This is my third year here as a senior commander at Camp Berkeley. I am an assistant adjutant general to General Jensen, and um, I, the gentleman to the right of this picture is Colonel Josh Steiner. And Josh is the new garrison commander. He replaced uh, Colonel Melton this fall, and um, he's a, a good add to our team. He continues to be an M-Day soldier, so while I have the duties Monday through Friday of taking care of the installation, he comes here as a, nor as a normal drilling soldier and manages the, the installation on the drill weekend for me. And then he's supported by Command Sergeant Major uh, Marcus Erickson, who's on the lower left there. Marcus and his wife Tracy are new residents on Camp Ripley. I used to be able to talk because I was the only one that lived on Camp Ripley, but then I now have another couple that have joined us and they are currently living in a home on the installation. And we're excited to have Marcus and his wealth of experience he brings with us. He's a retired state Iowa patrolman, a uh, recovering addicted farmer, and all sorts of different other aspects in his life. So he, he brings a, a lot of farm logic and common sense to the organization, um, which was my strong suit too. So I guess, you know, the good news is uh, we're able to um, add to that a little bit. We'll see what the next page looks like, John. All right, as I thought. So the next page kind of talks our economic impact. I'm going to run the hip here because um, a lot of the text didn't come through in whatever format we're showing you here in the PDF. But um, this last year, 2019, our economic impact to the community was again about $120 million of actual money. And, um, you know, as we put that through the multiplier, that brings us back into that $260 million. Hey, there you go. $260 million total economic impact in 2019. Uh, you compare the data to other years, it's right in the same ballpark. And as I talked before, this has been close based on construction projects, which is the third line there. And we probably have a little less money flowing in in 19 and the construction. We do have several construction projects on the base that are active right now. The vast majority of them are managed by Eagle Construction, which is a fairly local company as well. So and they have really taken over a lot of the bidding and securing a lot of the projects. Um, I wrote a note on this slide as well, just to let you know, uh, we've been doing a lot of research on where our full-time employees work. And I have over 700 and full-time employees who work here in Camp Ripley. And, and for the city of Little Falls, that's 196 of those employees who live in Little Falls. And so, uh, uh, we're part of your community and part of your school and part of your life in town and we're we're excited to be the best neighbor we can there as well john let's see what the next slide brings us all right excellent so some highlights from 2019 2019 was a little different for us the fact that our armor brigade combat team went to fort hood texas for their next their training and so that took about five thousand soldiers that would normally train to camp roughly and took it to Texas for three weeks. Um, what that did for us out of Ripley was um, it helped us have about uh, nine trains worth of equipment that went in here and left again on our railroads. Um, it also, to offset that troop flow though, we brought up the second brigade from Iowa. And they bring, in July, they brought about 3,000 soldiers up here and they did a three week exercise as well. And so um, it was good to have our brother from Iowa up and they did a great job training here. Well, one of the other highlights that I think is very important to highlight is we um, continue to expand our consultation and our, and our outreach and diversity. And one of the lanes that I have in that is, is diversity with our Native American tribes. And um, to work on that, we, um, we hosted our first annual Planning for the Future event where we engage Native American school children from three of the Native American schools, brought them here to Ripley on a day, and we had a cultural exchange where my, a group of my soldiers learned about their um, traditions and culture, as well as um, we um, got a chance to uh, expose that to some of our recruiters, because that's the, the desire of their elders, is to get a chance to improve their lives and so they see the military service as a way of doing that 
And finally, we got an opportunity to plant some native grasses. So it kind of brought it all together behind a focus of, you know, seeing what the future could bring for both the guard and the native um, tribes in the, in the area. So I think that's pretty important. We uh, had the opportunity to host a couple of congressmen, Pete Stauber and Pete, or I say again, Pete Phillips and Pete Stauber were both here and um, learning more about the National Guard and what a gem camp Ripley is associated with that. Our medical logistics warehouse, I was just touring that this afternoon with another general, um, has expanded and they are now providing medical supplies for all four, all 50 states in the nation, all their National Guard plus the four territories. And so a um, huge expanded uh, mission for them and it, it caused them to hire about five to 10 more new employees, including some Title V employees. So that was a big boom for us and we see that as an enduring mission going forward now. So what does that mean? That means the National Guard Bureau is invested into a operation at Camp Ripley and um, the Minnesota um, Medical Warehouse is responsible for, for providing all the medical supplies for all the National Guard units across the nation. And they can do that through their relationships with all the medical service companies that are in Minnesota and the fact that you know they can do it cheaper in reality than Big Army can through their normal supply system. So that's pretty cool. And then the final bullet there um, I want to highlight is uh, we signed the joint powers agreement between Morrison County and the fire departments in Morrison County and my Camp Ripley Fire Department. Um, my Camp Ripley Fire Department has grown to 17 full-time employees. We see three brand new um, structure trucks. There's combination structure and rescue trucks. And um, through that joint powers agreement now, we're able to allow them to respond to mutual aid. And um, I know that Sean Larson, and uh, the Sheriff Sean Larson has carved out of a kind of an area along 371 that they're responsible for as well. And so over the last year, we've had over 225 calls, calls off posts that have either involved my, um, my Mayo Clinic ambulance that they man for Mayo Clinic or my fire department. And so I really think that that's an example of some of the value we're adding to your community. Next slide, John, please. This last year, or this last two, three months, we, like everybody else, and the Zoom meeting is an example of it, have been um, affected by the COVID virus. And so for us in the, the National Guard, we spent most of March, April, and part of May uh, learning how to do virtual drills, how to um, have our soldiers still contribute to their National Guard unit, but doing it from their home. And um, we've been successful for that. Um, as we move into the season now, where they absolutely have to get together and come to Camp Ripley and train, um, we've got a lot of procedures in place to protect them. Um, it starts with um, decreasing the capacity of all our billeting by 50% as we social distance them at billets. But more importantly, it also um, is tied to an active campaign of disinfecting and cleaning between units as they house here so we can ensure that we can keep all our soldiers safe. Next slide, please. So if you come out to Camp Ripley, we continue every year to have a batch of new construction. And these three pictures are some of the examples of some of the buildings that we've taken the keys to this last year. In the upper left is an example of what we're replacing our tin huts with. We call them long houses. Um, they're, they're concrete masonry buildings, steel roofs. Um, they, by and large, have some form of geothermal heat and cooling. And uh, um, that's pretty cool in the fact that we, we continue to save a lot of electricity using the geothermal as our heat source for a lot of our buildings. On the right there are two of our buildings that came, are the last remnants of the effect of the tornado that came through in 2016. And we're excited with the fact that we are now done with the $31 million worth of construction that it took to replace those buildings. Um, the majority of that $31 million went into four buildings. And on the right there are two of those four buildings. The, the top one we're calling a Super T building. If you've been on Camp Ripley, a lot of our, our year-round housing is what's called T buildings. And this Super T building is, comes with the whole second floor of all the mess facility 
and gives us, gives us a lot more space. So we think it's going to be a very high in demand building. And we're excited to have ownership of all of them. Next slide, please. So some other projects that we've had there in the upper left. Uh, we've renovated what we refer to as the HEM building, the Heavy Equipment Maintenance Building, and it is now the home of our fire department. So if you come here right now and were to walk in that building, you'd probably find a dozen shiny red fire trucks, all state of the art, and all ready to respond across our installation. Um, below that, there in the lower left, you're seeing a picture of some of the generators we're installing. We continue to work on backing up um, our power systems so that they're reliable and more importantly so that we can go off the grid when we need to. So we've now installed a backup generation at all our substations. Uh, we're working towards purchasing this next year the computer aided control software that's going to allow us to balance the electrical load and finally we'll be at the point where we're able to go off of the main grid and rely on our solar panel, um, our 68 acres of solar field if we were to have to. Um, we probably won't do that very often because we like the reliability of the grid power, but um, we'll have the capability of becoming that island in the storm that's still got um, essential services like electricity when uh, we have a problem across the state. And then the lower right picture is a picture of the internal, the, the internal area of our um, post exchange, which got a complete facelift lift this last year and we're pretty excited about that. We also have a few other construction projects that Eagle's working on right now, the renovation of our large recreation center so that we can be set up to do large exercises in it, as well as um, our post, um, our armory here on the installation, what we refer to as our training and community center. Um, there's a portion of it that's getting renovated into new classrooms. So always exciting to see new um, construction on the base and it's probably one of my favorite things to do is to roam through some of that construction at night watch it come out of the ground and see things develop. Next slide. So um, normally you would have gotten this brief in the in the March and April time frame. We're going to try to get ahead of the training year. Here it is mid-June already and we're finally meeting with you um, and this slide is meant to kind of talk to you about some of the, the training that we've got scheduled on the installation in the next two quarters. And more importantly, to give you an idea of any kind of noise or dust or other pollutants that we may be throwing into your atmosphere. And so uh, here in June, we've got the, a couple of units on base right now that are prepping to deploy. And so uh, one of them is the two of the 135 infantry. Uh, they, chase, they trace their lineage back to the first Minnesota who saved our nation on the second day of Gettysburg. And um, they are here, all thousand of them, training to um, go to Djibouti, Africa for a year deployment. And so next, this coming Friday, we're going to have their going away ceremony and the Disturbing Our Troops organization is going to come and feed them some steaks in a socially distanced manner and feed their families at the same time at remote sites. And we're gonna videotape and record it all and broadcast it to families. So it'll be a pretty big event for us here on the installation this Friday. In July, we've got a couple other uh, uh, units that are coming here. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we had to cancel our youth camp, so our civilian numbers will be less than what they're showing on the slide in, in July. And then we roll into August in our main Field Artillery Battalion in the state, the 151 Field Artillery will be here in August. So they'll be making some noise for you, especially in the evenings, you'll hear that. Our first brigade is going to the National Training Center in July. They come back the, the, the beginning of August and they roll right into a training cycle in September and October that will have them re-qualifying on all their main guns on their, on their tanks. So you'll hear some heavier noise in September and October. Those um, individuals have about two months to train with their equipment in September and October before it's all got to be prepped to get on rail cars and leave here in November. And then they, they mobilize in early January and go to Mobile Station. And that brigade of 5,000 Minnesotans will be 
spending most of 2021 in um, Kuwait as part of the, the response that we have there to preventing the rainy difficulty. And so uh, lot, we continue to be a forest generation platform for Minnesota National Guard. I'm pretty proud of the, the amount of work that we're supporting in our, as we continue to allow units to train for our nation for state. Next slide, please. One of those other air balloons that we have flying around, that's the Air Force. Um, they're both the Guard and the Reserve have wings in, in Minneapolis, C-130 airplanes, and by and large, especially after the COVID event, which shut down their flying, um, we're seeing a lot more flights almost daily with our C-130s. So you're gonna see a swirl of C-130s above Camp Ripley, and um, they will continue to practice touch and goes in our airfield. Our airfield expanded this last year, and so we're pretty proud of its expanded services. They're capable of doing air traffic control now 24 hours a day, as well as providing fueling for our helicopters. And um, so we're coupled with the fire department, we have one of a state-of-the-art airfield here as well, meeting all the Army requirements as well as the Air Force for support. Our Air Force brethren also come and use our ground facilities at Camp Ripley, specifically our ranges and our CACDAP for their security forces. Next slide, please. So we continue to um, host our, some full-time partners on Camp Ripley, the State Patrol, the DNR, HSDM, and MnDOT. Um, the DNR and the State Patrol particularly are having their academies. Uh, the, the State Patrol accelerated their academy training schedule, so they started their academy in January and they graduated in April instead of May, which is normal. That meant that they spent most of their weekends here training as well. And, um, but they, I'm pretty sure that they were proud to have that extra manpower this last month with the rioting in, in the cities. The DNR is actively doing their academy right now, so they have 15 academy students right now that are training in our emergency management training center every day. And then speaking of that training center, HSCM continues to use it as their training venue, and they will um, be continuing to do some full-time emergency management activities out of there as well this coming year. The only negative with COVID, COVID for our state agency partners is the MnDOT has told us that they're not going to host their snowplow driver training this fall. Um, they'll be next back next fall once we figure out how to live with the virus. But for this year, hopefully they'll be able to plow our roads without the level of training that they normally get in their two-week session here at Camp Ripley. Next slide. Of course, um, you know, no different than what I'm doing right now. We have a lot of programs in place for community outreach. Uh, in September of last year, we were excited to host our annual open house and we dedicated it to the Air Force. So we, we, um, we played up a lot of Air Force angles and that was to tie in with uh, the reveal of Charles Kapsner's last painting for the, for the, the State Veterans Cemetery, which is our neighbor here to the east. And, a lot of people think the State, State Veterans Cemetery is part of Camp Ripley. It's a complimentary facility it's owned by the Department of Veterans Affairs, and we're pretty excited to provide whatever resources we can to it. And tying that presentation in with our open house just made sense. And so we did that in September and had a, had a few flybys and some fog that was exciting in the morning, but pretty overall, pretty great event. Um, Throughout the rest of the year, we have a, a whole bunch of other uh, presentations and festivals. Once again, this year, we did the gift tag program, so we're very, very much involved in the Little Falls community with that, as well as um, our food drive this year went to the Little Falls Food Show. And, um, and obviously, we're always proud of our missions that we have with our deploy, deploy, deployed soldier and disabled soldier veteran hunting and fishing events that uh, continue to be strongly supported. Most of that was started by my predecessor, Scott St. Sauber, and 
I continue to try to live up to his vision of what that looks like as well. Next slide. Our environmental program continues to be world renowned. It once again won a, um, awards at the DOD level, which you know we talk about it almost every year, but if you sit back and think, they um, got the award this year for the best natural resources program in all of DOD. That's every Air Force base, every Naval base, and every Army base and, and Marine Corps base in the DOD. They are the number one environmental program. And so when you start thinking about the millions of acres that the Department of Defense has, and the fact that our Camp Ripley Natural Resources team um, competes and beats out all those other installations, that's really remarkable. And they did it this year with um, some emphasis on, um, we wanted to promote a little bit of the natural history around the old fort site, as well as their continued effort to clear the natural resources um, program on the installation and a lot of our um, studies. The picture on the slide is of the Golden Eagle that they caught this winter. I think we've now collared or put GPS backpacks on four Golden Eagles over the last couple of years, which is another amazing, amazing program of the research. Um, helping us understand the, how, where golden eagles fly and where they summer and winter. These guys come down and live at Camp Ripley in the heart of our 20 below weather and in the winter. And in the summer, they're way up on the Arctic Circle, way up to Northern Canada. Next slide. I made the team put this slide in your back end and we talk about it every year because I want to emphasize the fact that to have a great environmental program, there's a reason. And the reason is because I have a lot of environmental oversight from a lot of agencies, both federal and state and local. And um, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that I want, I want, my team wouldn't win the awards they do if we weren't being a great environmental stewards. And so this really is just meant to kind of highlight some of the oversight that we have and um, to lend a level of assurance to the community that we're doing everything we can to, per, to preserve our great installation going forward. Next slide, please. Of course, we couldn't do that without environmental partnerships. So here's a list of all the different agencies in the state that we partner with. For Morrison County and the city of Little Falls, the Minnesota Board of Water and Soil Resources is a huge partner as we continue to work with Bowser to um, execute ACUB easements. And we'll talk about ACUB a little bit here on the next slide. The other piece I'm always so proud about is our internships from St. Cloud and Central Lakes College. And it's fun right now to see those interns running around. And um, the other day I met one that was prepping a whole bunch of of um, traps to catch rodents downrange. I bet he had a hundred traps that he was cleaning up so that he could catch some kind of field mouse that they're studying. And all that is an effort to show that our military training continues to not impact the environment. And so it's exciting to see those young environmentalists learn their trade here at Camp Ripley. Next slide. Three side slides left, and this one talks about the prescribed burns that we've done this last year. If you didn't notice, we burned again about 15,000 acres of Camp Ripley this spring. Now we had probably one of the best burn seasons that you can imagine. Um, weather co cooperated, it was an early spring, it was a fairly dry spring. But what was really important is the only good advantage of COVID is that a lot of us burned whenever we wanted to because we didn't have to fit our burn the most training like we normally do. And as we burn all that ground, we continue to burn the majority of it to prevent fire from leaving Camp Ripley. So we're burning off stuff that would turn into fuel in the summer and um, stuff that would, the soldiers would normally ignite with some of their munitions. So we burn it off in the spring and that helps protect us from having fires later in the season. The stuff at darker ground though is all stuff that we're burning to um, try to control what kind of vegetation is growing there. And so if you look up in the, in the middle on the right there, we're actively burning sites that were in and around the old fort site. 
in an effort to turn that back into the prairie that it was and control some of the brush, buck brush that wants to be invasive into that site. And so I'm um, kind of excited how that's turning into a nice interpretive site as well. Next slide. And this slide based is our final slide talks about our ACOM and our Sentinel landscape program. A little easier for you to understand this slide, everything in green is enrolled in ACOV and as part of an easement program that we've got in place to protect that land from development. And so we continue to drop money into that. This last year, um, 2.7 million came from the state funds. So it was the start of Sam's to Upper Hairdo Council. And so we added that to about the $14 million that we've had from them over time. And right now we're working with um, Sullivan Township to enter a large chunk of potlash land. Um, next Thursday, when I go to their township meeting, we're gonna talk about how that, how they've taken the reins and are taking over the ownership of that land to increase the amount of public land in their township. And ACUP funds are making that possible. So that's pretty exciting to me. And the final slide is a picture of my team in front of one of the historic buildings on Camp Ripley. And um, I, I've talked a lot here, but I really want to open up the floor and give you a chance to answer questions that I may be able to answer for you. So ladies, gentlemen, are there anything that you would like to ask me for? Mr. President. Hey. If I could, uh, General, I just want to thank you once, once again for your economic impact and all that the National Guard does uh, for all of our surrounding communities. And I think you're doing a great job out there. So thank you very much. Cool. Thank you, Mayor. I would say thank you for that exact same thing as well. You talked about being a good neighbor and thank you for doing that. President. Thank you for coming and presenting this to us, even under different circumstances. Well, um, I hope we shake your hand next year. <laughs> That's good. I'd like to do that. <laughs> Thank you, General. All right. Have a great meeting. We're going to log out here. Thank you for having us, and we'll Thank continue you. to make your noise, ground noise in the north. <laughs> Consent agenda. Airport Commission minutes May 2020 received. Animal Control Report May 2020 received. Application for permanent structure sale of fireworks license, Walmart approved. Economic Development Authority minutes May 2020 received. Fire Report May 2020 received. Housing and Redevelopment Authority minutes June 2020 received. Planning Commission minutes June 2020 received. Recycling reports January through April 2020 received. Wastewater report May 2020 received. Water report May 2020 received. What is the wish of the council? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by council member Koshik, second by council member Hansen. Uh, roll call, please. Percock? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Kushik? Yes. Kanakala? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Carries. Public hearings and weddings. Uh, Ludding, Crosswind, Runaway Project, Kramer Trucking and Excavating. Frank? Good evening. Um, on March 31st, we opened the bids, bids for our Crosswind Runway Project. We received four bids. Uh, the low bid came from Kramer Trucking and Excavating in the amount of $1,375,979.85. So if you recall, we did get a grant for this. They're in the process of executing that. So tonight, I would recommend the council award the project to Kramer Trucking and Excavating in the amount of $1,375,000. $979.85 contingent upon federal and state funding uh, coming through. What is the wish of the council? So moved. Second. Motion 
motion by Councilmember Kanapla, second by Councilmember Lundberg. Is there any discussion? Just as a reminder, Greg, the large percentage of this comes from state and federal funds, correct? That is correct, yep. It's a 90-10 split, so 90% is federal, 5% is state, and then the other 5% is split between the city and the county. Roll call, please. Hansen? Yes. Bushnick? Yes. Kanopolo? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Urcock? Yes. Aries? Lime Sludge Residual Plan, Short Elling, Elliott and Hendrickson Water Facility. Greg. Thank you. So one of the things that we're looking at at the water plant, uh, we currently use lime to soften our water, um, but then there's some leftover lime that we have to dispose of once the, 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 pro the softening process is complete. Currently we use uh, basically stabilization lagoons up on top of the hill uh, in order to separate the water from the, the lime. The spent lime we apply to egg fields to help with the farmer's field. But long-term planning, we want to see if there's a better way to um, to remove that water from that uh, from that spent lime. It'll still ultimately go to a farmer's field, um, but we want to see if there's a, a better situation in terms of um, economical as well as uh, cost or effectiveness to to do that. So we did send out the request for proposal to four firms. We received four proposals back. Uh, the four engineering firms were SCH. Bolton and Mink, Apex, and Warren Engineering. Uh, they ranged in price from $10,900 all the way up to $22,600. Uh, both Duane and myself scored the proposal on a number of different criteria. 20% was based on fee, 20% was on project understanding, 30% was based on the firm's experience of similar projects, and then 30% was on the staff experience that was gonna be working on it. Based on that ranking, uh, both Duane and myself uh, at SEH as the uh, top candidate for the for the project. And so this evening, we are recommending awarding the project to SEH out of St. Cloud uh, in the amount of $18,575 to be charged to the Water Improvement Fund. What is the motion of the council? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Discussion. Yeah. Oops, sorry, forgot. Motion by Councilmember Hansen, second by Councilmember Lundberg. How many questions? Call roll, please. Um, Hansen? Yes. Gushing? Yes. Kanopola? Yes. Milchburn? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Urcock? Yes. Carries. New business, fire department. Uh, Michael Bitter Retirement as a paid on call firefighter, except. Chief, is there anything that you need to tell us with either one of these? I kind of skipped that part of the first line. Uh, yeah, I'll just talk a little bit about it. Thank you. Uh, Michael Mirror, I'm sad to say, uh, submitted his retirement letter effective July 1st. Uh, he's been a member of the department since July of 1990. Most recently, he's been serving as assistant chief uh, for about the last five years. He's been in other leadership roles and he's also been the Relief Association president for as long as I can remember. So he's been a vital asset to the department and he's gonna be greatly missed, hard to replace. Next item, we'll discuss that as well. So we'll recognize him here coming up at a meeting for his years of service, and we wish him the best in his retirement. What is the wish of the council? I'll make a motion to accept Mike Lemire's resignation. I'll second it. Motion by Councilmember Goshik, second by Councilmember Knopfa. Need discussion? Roll call, please. Gushik? Yes. Kanopola? Yes. Wiltergren? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Hercock? Yes. 
Hanson. Yes. Carries. Assistant Fire Chief Posting authorized. Thank you. Uh, to go along with Mike Muir retiring, uh, his Assistant Chief position will be open, so I'm requesting the authorization to post that internally within the department. Uh, you most recently approved that job description at the May 4th meeting uh, that HR Director Payne and I created, so we would go off of that job description. We're currently in the process yet of filling those three captain positions that you approved also on May 4th. So that may tie into this a little bit as well. We might have to come back to you to uh, amend that a little bit, depending on how that all plays out. What is the wish of the council? I'll make a motion to authorize the request to fill the assistant chief vacancy. Second. Motion by Council Member Hansen, second by Council Member Liljegren. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Karnopola? Yes. Liljegren? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Zilka? Yes. Perkock? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Lushik? Yes. Carries. Internship agreement, Stone Conley, Sourcewell. Amended City Council motion of May 18, 2020. John. Thank you, Council President. Um, as I updated you in the work session, um, we have the opportunity now to utilize the funds that we received from SourceWell to offset their internship programs. Um, in this instance, uh, Stone Conley was, uh, we had pledged to use those administrative dollars to help finance the fellowship program. Um, that has been postponed. Uh, so we do have the funds for this semester uh, available to us, and I am requesting that we um, approve the use those internship dollars to use um, the funds of Stone Connolly's, uh, offset the cost of Stone Connolly's internship. Um, we do have to hire him as a, an employee. We do have that in the job description that been was updated at the end of last year. Uh, the the wage is above the twelve dollar an hour reimbursement that we get from Sourcewell. Fourteen uh, sixty-five, uh, I believe, and then we do have the other additional costs, ancillary costs of the insurance and taxes that we do have to pay for the employee. But it should should amount to um, you know a pretty modest uh, out-of-pocket cost to the city uh, for the remaining hours of his internship. They they would not uh, exceed three hundred hours. That is what he's required for for the for the program. What is the wish of the council? I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Motion by council member Hansen, second by council member Lundberg. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Lilligren? Yes. Lundberg? Yes. Vilka? Yes. Burkhock? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Bushick? Yes. Panopola? Yes. Carries. Solution 2020 40 Authorization to apply for grant, Defense Community Infrastructure Pilot Program, United States Department of Defense. Adopt. John. Uh, thank you again, Council President. Uh, as I discussed more in depth in the work session, um, we do have an opportunity to apply for the defense, uh, Department of Defense Community Infrastructure Pilot Program grant. They have a $25 million grant program uh, for eligible uh, either state government, local government, or a member-owned nonprofit utility, public utility, uh, to apply for funds to do uh, infrastructure projects or facilities that are would benefit military families. Part of their uh, initiatives to um, improve the quality of life for military families. In our area, um, we obviously have Camp Ripley, we heard from tonight, uh, very close in proximity to uh, the city of Little Falls. Um, they have identified a very large need of their service members um, in finding childcare and having childcare available for those, for those members. And um, with that, they have requested that. Uh, City of Little Falls 
applicant to an application to this grant and Dev offered that they will support our application, which is a requirement as, as part of the, the, the work. So we do need a letter of support from the commanding officer and, and Brigadier General Cruz is committed to, to supplying us with that, with that letter of support. So this is, as I said, a pre-application. Um, so there is the June 26th deadline for this, this portion of the application. Would, uh, it's going to be reviewed and then in August, around August 8th, we would be um, announced whether or not we, we get to um, informally apply for the, for the um, federal program through the Department of Defense. Um, so with that, we would be working with somebody assigned to us uh, to, to develop that grant application and we would find out in September whether or not we would uh, receive the award. So the key components to this program is, it, is that it does need to be owned by one of those eligible entities to receive the funds, so the facility would need to be owned by the city of Little Falls. Um, we're looking at developing um, a facility to either be, that would meet the building code qualifications to be a child care center or a, uh, a building that could be uh, a fit the pod model. And a pod model is a facility that can uh, host multiple family licensed providers in individual rooms on the same site. So the, the challenge there uh, for communities to develop those is that they do need to, that facility does need to meet the same standards and criteria of, of the building code that a child care center meets. Um, so we would we would look at constructing it in, in a way that it could serve either purpose and maximize our, our flexibility and, and opportunity to, to have providers that could uh, serve members of both Little Falls and The other key component to this grant application is that we do need to, do need to build into the program ways that we can benefit military families um, at, to at least 50% of the capacity of the facility. So our partnership agreements with providers would need to include measures that are going to ensure that military, military families um, could receive some, some benefit from, from the access to the child care. So either that's um, very likely in some capacity reserving spots for at least 50% to serve uh, military families. Uh, based on the demographic data and what we heard from General Cruz tonight, there are over 100 uh, full-time uh, people working at Camp Ripley and that live in the Little Falls area. Well, um, not, not to mention the other of the other 700, how many of them are probably commuting from uh, a 30 mile or even 50 mile radius around the, the installation. Um, having Little Falls being so centrally located, those members could be very well served by a child care facility in Little Falls if they are you know, parents of, of, of kids that age group. Um, knowing that you know, we're likely on the path or very close to the path for their commute to work every day and if they do need child care, um, that certainly could benefit us. Um, you know, so the, so the, there would be a gain to child care slots, I believe, in our, in our community to even um, non-military families. Um, whereas, you know, what we see is uh, military families probably have access to child care slots already, and with that, they would be able to uh, open, free up those spots to other members of the community. Um, the, the grant itself does create some additional opportunities to, to fund the facility beyond just construction, so that is a part of the intent in the application is that we are asking for more dollars uh, beyond just the cost to build the facility um, to off also offset offset operation maintenance and improvements uh, on the site uh, for the life of the grant uh, afterwards to help lower the cost for those operators and providers when they come to the facility. What is the wish of the council? Move to approve the application. Second. Motion by Councilmember Kanakwa, second by Councilmember Lemberg. Um, for resolution 2020-40, discussion. Roll call, please. Lundberg? Yes. Delka? Yes. Hercock? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Lushik? Yes. Kanakwa? Yes. Lilzegren? Yes. Carries. 
Are there any announcements? If there are none, we will recess our meeting to Monday, June 22nd, I believe 1 p.m., uh, where we'll review our COVID-19 plan and the appeal, the property appeal. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.